guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video that was requested by my patrons, but I'm very excited to do it. So this is going to be bookshelf or what is it? Scavenger hunt chooses what I read. Basically, I'm going to be following a list of like scavenger hunt prompts to help me pick what I'm going to read next. And then I'm going to read that book in this video. I've seen a lot of other booktubers do this. I know Erin from Booked and Busy did it a while back. But yeah, we're just going to get started. I think to do this, I'm going to try to only pick books that I've read and gave five stars until I get to the last prompt that's like choosing the book that I'm gonna read. That way we're like only going through books that I love. So the very first question says to grab your favorite book, which I could have many options for. I feel like the perfect book to start with, actually the last book that I finished reading, which is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I just finished this a couple days ago. Gave it five stars. It's probably my favorite thriller of the year. So let's start with this. And the prompt for this is to go to the acknowledgments and the first name you see, find a book by an author with the same name. We're going to go to the acknowledgments, which should be right here. Okay, first page of the acknowledgments. There are no names, so let's turn the page. Um, oh my God, <laughs> perfect. You guys see right there, Lane Fargo was the first name that I saw. Not only is it a name, but it's an author's name, who I have a book from, that I read, that I also rated five stars. They never learn. Perfect. So the next prompt is to pick something on the cover and find another book with the same thing in the title. Okay, so let's see. What do we have on this cover? There's a gate. There's leaves. There's a tower. Okay, gate, leaves, tower. <laughs> the only thing that's coming to my mind is House of Leaves but I don't own that. Let's check Goodreads. All right, according to my Goodreads, I have no books with leaves in the title. I have no books with gate in the title. I have one book with tower in the title, and it just happens to be a book that I gave five stars. The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden. Also, these two covers have like the same colors. So yeah, not only does it have tower in the title, but there is a tower on the cover. So perfect. The prompt for this is to go to page 50, line five, pick a word from that line and find a title with that word. Page 50, line five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm gonna read you guys the line. But one thing was certain, the far end of the house held a vast. Okay, so words in that sentence. One, certain, far, end, house, okay. All right, we could do something with that. I do have a couple house books. However, I did not like either of these, so I don't really want to pick them. I have a certain, a certain hunger, but I haven't read this. I'm sure I could find something better. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sure there were people already screaming at me to pick this book. I don't know why it didn't immediately come to my head. The House in the Cerulean Sea. Duh, another five star read. Okay, find a five star read with the same colors on the cover. Oh, hold on, I hear Loki, he wants in. You wanna help me with the scavenger hunt? No, you're more interested in what's out the window? Okay. The colors on this cover that stand out to me is like the blue teal and then this kind of pinky purple shade. So let me see what I can find. Too bad I can't pick two books because the combination of these spines is this book, but the covers, neither of them is an exact match. Ooh. You know what? This is close. Beneath the sugar sky. Like, it's not exact. Like the shades aren't exactly the same, but I feel like it has the same components. They both have clouds in the sky. They both have the pink. They both have the blue. I feel like that's the closest I'm gonna get. And I gave it five stars. So let's go with that. So the prompt for this one is, find a book with the same number of pages. Oh my God, 174. Well, obviously I can just tell by looking at books. So let me just kind of turn you quickly because we're gonna be right here. I have tons of novellas here. So 124, 188, close. Ooh, this one might be close. Nope, 159. This seems like it could be. 173, okay, that's the closest we've gotten. I have not read it yet. So I'd like to find something else. You know what? I feel like it's cheating, but let's check the other way with children books. Just because I really want to only pick books that I've read if I can. I'm not having luck. 
174, baby, yes, okay. We're gonna go with this instead of right, baby, since I've read it and gave it five stars. So the next prompt is flip to any page, the first name you see, find a book by an author who shares that name. Um, the first, <laughs> the first name I see is Trickery. I'm gonna say I don't have a book with an author that has that name, so let's open again to <sighs> Chicory. Chicory again. <laughs> let's try again here. Okay, Reagan. That is the main character's name. I cannot think of a single author named Reagan. Let's try again. Maybe in the beginning of the book. Maybe like here. Karen. We have a Karen. Okay, that actually works because Karen Marie Monning wrote the Fever series that I love. So let's go with that. I can't think of any other Karens except for Karen Slaughter, but I DNF'd the only book I had by her. So, okay, where are we at? Um, find another title with the same number of letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine letters. Let me check my favorite books. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. Let's come over to romance. See if there's anything over here. All right, the pool boy. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The doctor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, the doctor's an option. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See a ruin. Perfect. The prompt for this is find a book with a similar cover. This is literally like in my opinion, such a unique cover. So let's take a look at this cover. First thing you see, it's blue. Second thing, I see a woman in water, a ship. Okay, so a blue book with water, maybe a woman underwater. That's what I'm thinking. I really thought this was gonna be easier to find books with water. I apparently do not have that many. I have two. This one I haven't read, which like, I feel like these are similar-ish. That is like not a match, not a match. Here's another one with water and a woman on it, but like, no, too different. Ooh, where is that? Oh my God, it's back here. From below, they're both underwater. They both have a girl floating in a dress. I feel like that's the closest we're gonna get because the only two books I could find that even comes remotely similar I haven't read but this one has more of the element this one only has water no girl this one has the girl in the dress floating underwater I feel like that's the closest match we're gonna get I am breaking my streak of picking books that I've read and gave five stars however because I haven't read this yet however this is a five star prediction so like the next prompt is oh my god is this the last one this is the last one okay so this book is going to determine what book I'm gonna read. Hold on, okay. Before we figure that out, let's recap our journey, how we got here. Here are the books we went on this journey with. So we started out with The Last Housewife, then They Never Learn by Lane Fargo, The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden, The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, Beneath the Sugar Sky, and Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean and McGuire, Dark Fever by Karen Marie Monning, Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, to from Below by Darcy Coates. And now I'm gonna open to a random page and that's gonna determine what I'm reading. So I'm nervous, I'm nervous, this is so much pressure. Lessons, right here. Lessons. That was the first word I saw. Lessons. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to look on my Goodreads because I nothing is coming to my mind except for Lessons in Corruption by Gianna Darling, which I DNF'd. <gasps> Oh my god. <laughs> Not only is it a book by an author who I loved, an author who we've already talked about in this video, and it's a book that people constantly ask me if I've read. Lessons in Sin. <laughs> oh my god, this could not have gone more perfectly. One, because I do really want to read this because it's by Pam Godwin, who wrote Sea of Ruin, one of my favorite romances, but also because this is a book that I feel like I really needed to be pushed to read because it has a couple of tropes that I don't normally like. So this is a student-teacher romance that takes place in a Catholic boarding school between the priest headmaster of the school and one of the students. 
Like, could that not be more taboo? I feel like it's 50-50 if I'm gonna enjoy this or if I'm gonna hate it. On the one hand, I love Pam Godwin, but on the other hand, I hate student teacher. So, I feel like this is gonna be the perfect book to vlog. Oh my god, this is awesome. I'm excited. So yeah, keep watching the video if you wanna hear my thoughts on lessons and sin. I am about to go on some reading sprints with my patrons. So I'm going to be reading this. I did already read the first two chapters. I don't know y'all. I don't know about this one. Like the setup is it's a little much for me. I can't tell how old she is. She's definitely a teenager. Really, really hoping she's 18. But like that's that's even pushing it. I don't know. I, I can't remember if I said what this was about. Basically, this is about a girl whose mom sends her to this like Catholic girls reform school to like discipline her and teach her to be a more obedient woman and so the headmaster of the school father magnus punishes the students whenever they misbehave and of course he's really hot i think he's in his late 30s i don't know <laughs> I want to have an open mind about it and I know that I love Pam Godwin's writing and honestly Pam Godwin there was something that happened in Sea of Ruin that normally would make me hate a romance but the way that she handled it was so in my opinion like done so well I'm like I'm willing to trust her okay I'm trusting her Miss Pam Godwin don't make me regret this <laughs> So we'll see. I'm gonna go live and sprint with my patrons and read this. There was this one line where he was like, when she's not speaking, she's so mature and seems like an adult. But then when she opens her mouth, all I hear is a child. And I'm like, yeah, cause she's a child, sir. All right, I just got off the live. We were reading for a little over two hours. I am now 140 pages in. I said this during the live. I think I'm enjoying it. Like, ultimately, I'm enjoying it. However, it's multi-POV, and I think I'm liking it more when we're in her point of view. Because I'm like, yeah, okay. She's 18, by the way. It was confirmed she was 18. To me, it makes sense. Like, her attraction to him makes sense. And I also like the little plot she has going where she is trying to misbehave to get kicked out because she doesn't want to be here anymore. And I like, I'm liking her. I like her. But then we go into his point of view. And I don't know, his like thought process behind being attracted to this 18 year old student. It's not doing it for me. But Pam Godwin's a great writer. Like I'm loving the writing. I'm enjoying it. Like I'm not disliking it. I'm just watching him, you know? I'm like, you're on thin ice. So yeah, I might read some more in bed. I'm enjoying it. Like I'm leaning towards enjoying it. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. He did just make her piss herself, which was gross. <laughs> so gotta say, not into humiliation. I like the school aspect, like the this like private boarding school vibe. I really think it's just his point of view that I'm not liking. Like if this was entirely in her point of view, I'd be having a blast. All right, I don't even know if you guys can see me. This lighting is not good, but I am going out to pick up one of my prescriptions and I have to go to like this specialty pharmacy that's like 30 minutes away, which is kind of a drive but it is next to a half price book so i always treat myself and go in there whenever i have to go pick up my medicine so we're gonna do that but update on lessons in sin i'm about 50 percent into the book and i think as a book i'm enjoying it however as a romance i'm not enjoying it i'm just not on board with this romance and honestly at this point it's not even because of the student teacher dynamic it's just because i don't really feel anything between them but like i said pam godwin is such a good writer that like as a book i'm entertained and i'm enjoying it i'm just the romance isn't making me like feel anything so we'll see how it goes how i feel about it towards the end but as of right now i feel I'm feeling like three stars. I guess how the second half goes will depend if I, if it's like a 3.5 or more down to like a two. I'm back 
from my little outing. I didn't film at all in Half Price Books because it was really, really crowded. But oh my god, they had an amazing selection. Like so many brand new books. I don't know if they like got overstock of stuff, but like books that look like they'd never been touched. I had to like control myself, but I only got two books. So the first one I got... I've really, really been wanting this. It's Elder Race by Adrienne Tchaikovsky. This is like a fantasy novella. It's about a girl who is the fourth daughter of the queen in this realm. And there's a demon terrorizing the land. So she tries to get the help of this sorcerer, but he's forbidden to help. I don't know. It sounds like it could be good. I really like fantasy novellas. So was excited to find that. And then the other book is... For the Throne by Hannah Witten, which is the sequel to For the Wolf, which, spoiler for my <laughs> September TBR, I already filmed it, but I'm going to be reading For the Wolf in September. And they have the sequel. I feel like this just came out, like, a couple months ago. I could be wrong, but I was very surprised to find this. I have no idea if this is, like, a direct sequel or if it's, like, a companion, but I figured since I'm reading the first book in September... I might as well pick up the sequel. But then when I got home, there was this package from Source Books. Well, the first book in here is The Sacrifice by Rinchu Peko, which I'm so excited to read. I think that I've read, I've read three or four Rinchu Peko books and I've loved all of them. I feel like she's kind of an author who I always forget about, but then I really love reading her books. And this sounds so good. I believe it's a YA horror. It says, An island oasis turns deadly when a terrifying legend threatens to kill off visitors one by one. I don't know. This sounds great. Um, and I really liked her horror book, The Girl from the Well, because I had vibes of, like, The Ring, and I loved that. So I'm excited to read this. This comes out in October. So very excited. Also, I love this cover. And then the other book they sent me... There must have been a miscommunication because I got another copy of Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Roberts. So I will probably give this to somebody since they already sent me a copy. And I listened to a lot of Lessons in Sin on my drive. I think I only have like 30 minutes left of the audiobook, so I'm very close to the end. So I'm going to go finish that and then we can come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. I finished Lessons in Sin. I think... My thoughts really haven't changed. Um, as a book, I enjoyed it. I think Pam Godwin is a really great writer. And I think if there was anyone that was going to make me like these tropes, it would have been her. I really think I was like this close to being there. But there was a couple things that kept me from like feeling the romance. And for me, I know that I like a romance when I feel sick. Every single romance book that I've ever read that I loved made me feel like I was going to throw up. <laughs> Like, genuinely. So, if I don't get that feeling, then that's how I know I'm not really liking it. And I never felt sick. I never even felt, like, a little bit of butterflies. I just never felt anything, you know? Like, in my gut, I never felt anything. I honestly don't think that was to do with disliking student teacher. Because it took a little bit for me to get past that but I eventually did and like that wasn't even my concern I just didn't feel anything between the characters and I think I've realized that for a student teacher to work for me they have to put up a little bit more of a fight a little bit more of a fight draw out the slow burn longer I just felt like they gave in way too fast they gave in way too fast and so I was just kind of like ah I don't know. Also, like I had said early on, I liked her point of view chapters because I liked her as a character. I didn't really care for him. Like, I just, nothing about him was like sexy or appealing to me, which is crazy because I love priests. <laughs> I love a priest trope. Like, I love that trope. So I was excited about him, but like, I just, I didn't feel anything from him. He had this supposed dark past, which is why he became a priest to like avoid temptation. His thing that he was like trying to get away from was that he got off on hurting women, like sexually hurting them, consensually, but like he got off on like really hurting them, like cutting and burning and like humiliation. And I was expecting that, I guess, I don't know. I was expecting there to be like some reason why he had that impulse 
there was no reason, right? Like there was no reason. So that just, it didn't really make sense to me. The sex scenes were definitely hot, like objectively, but I think because I didn't feel their romantic vibe, I didn't really get anything out of their sex scenes. I will say though, like I, I actually finished the book. I've never, I don't know that I've ever actually finished a student teacher romance. I always DNF them. So like, I mean, Pam Godwin made me finish one. As a book, I thought it was entertaining. As a romance, I felt like it failed. I wish there was a way that I could combine these two books because both of these books failed for me in certain aspects. I felt like Priest was very hot and like I felt the fire and the passion, but as a book, as a story, I didn't, I wasn't really invested. I didn't really care. And then Lessons in Sin, as a book, and a plot, I loved it and was very entertained, but as a romance, it really failed for me. So if I could combine these, that would be perfect to me. So I think I'm gonna give this 2.5 stars, three stars, I don't know. 2.5 feels too harsh, cause I really, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go 2.5, cause like, it's a romance book. So if I didn't even like the romance, as a book it failed. Even if I found it entertaining, yeah, 2.5, that feels low. I don't know, I don't know. I do know that Pam Godwin has another student teacher romance. I think it's called Dark Notes. I really feel like she's the only author who could make me like student teacher. So let me know in the comments if you think that I should try Dark Notes because I would be willing to give it a try. Because again, like, I was skeptical going into this, but that wasn't even what made me dislike this romance. But I feel like this was a good book to vlog. I'm glad that I, this ended up being the one that I picked from the scavenger hunt because I don't know if I would have made time to read it otherwise. Here's another thing I want you guys to do. In the comments, let me know what is your favorite romance that has the student teacher trope in it because I feel like it would be fun to do like a whole reading vlog just reading a bunch of them and trying to find one that I actually like. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!